Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Okay, so I just had my baby three weeks ago and boy has life changed. You know, I knew I wanted to breastfeed, but there were things I didn't understand before I got started. You may have questions too, so I thought I'd talk with some people who helped me along the way. Are all my new parents listening? Good, let's see if Dr. Sanchez is here. Good morning, Sarina. Good morning, Dr. Sanchez. I feel like a lot of new moms want to breastfeed but don't know why it's so important and how to start. I'm so glad you asked. It can be challenging at first, but with support systems in place, you can make it work. There are lots of reasons to breastfeed. Babies that nurse have less chance of problems like ear infections, SIDS, obesity, diabetes, and some types of cancer. For moms, breastfeeding lessens the risk of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. Breast milk has all the nutrients a baby needs to grow and develop. So how long should babies breastfeed? Even breastfeeding for a short time is helpful for you and your baby, but doctors recommend giving only breast milk for about the first six months, then adding foods and continuing to breastfeed up to the age of two. Can you tell us about skin-to-skin -skin contact? I've heard it's the thing to do. Yes, skin-to-skin -skin contact is highly recommended. It's when a baby is placed on a mother's chest as soon as possible after birth for about an hour or until the first feeding. Loss of skin-to-skin -skin contact really helps to get a good milk supply started and helps calm mom and baby after birth. All parents and babies benefit from skin-to-skin, -skin, whether or not they are breastfeeding. How does it work? Well, it connects the parent right away to their baby. It also releases hormones that relieves stress and it stabilizes the baby's temperature, breathing rate, heart rate, and blood sugar. And it strengthens parents' baby communication. Babies even cry less. OMG, did you hear her? She said they cry less. Yes, please. Well, this is all such helpful information. Thank you. Oops. I'm late for my next appointment. Thanks so much, Dr. Sanchez. Bye. Take care. Hey there, Melissa. Hi, Serena. Since you're a registered nurse and a lactation consultant, I wanted to ask you a few questions. First off, why should breastfeeding happen in the first hour? Like, why so early? That first hour is when your baby's most alert, and it helps get your milk supply off to a great start. It even helps your baby get important nutrition and immunity right away. And what's the first milk you make called? Oh, that's colostrum, and it lasts the first few days. It's packed with nutrients and antibodies and is so healthy for babies that it's called liquid gold. Next question. My baby stayed with me in my room the whole time I was in the hospital. Can you tell me why that's such a good idea? Rooming in with your baby is so important. It helps you recognize your baby's feeding cues so you know when your baby's ready to eat. When they're hungry, they may move their fist to their mouth, turn their head to look for the breast, suck on their hands, or smack their lips. They simply might look more alert and be more active than usual. That's the best time to feed, way before they cry. And what about crying? So here's the thing. Babies cry for different reasons. Sometimes babies do cry when they're hungry, but usually crying is a late sign of hunger. Okay, so now that we know about feeding cues, how often do newborns need to feed? In the very beginning, it's important to feed your baby early and often. Have you heard the phrase eight or more in 24? No, don't think so. Well, this means you want to aim for eight or more feedings in 24 hours. The more you breastfeed, the more milk your body will make. And here's where a good latch comes in. A baby needs to nurse with a wide open mouth, latching onto the breast rather than just the nipple. It helps to support your baby's neck and shoulders so they can feed easily. Your baby should be facing you with their chin lifted and their cheeks right up against your breast. You're a pro at this. All in a day's work. A couple more questions. Let's hear it. And this was something I kind of dealt with. What happens if I'm not sure I have enough milk? This is a very common concern that I hear from lots of parents, so you're not alone. Babies don't need a lot of milk in the beginning. Their bellies are smaller than you might think. And you can tell if they're getting enough milk by how well they're growing and the number of wet and dirty diapers they go through. The more time you spend with your baby, the easier it will be to recognize their feeding cues and the more confident you'll feel. 
Families can always check with their nurse, doctor, lactation consultant, or WIC peer counselor to make sure. Should breastfed babies ever take formula, you think? Using formula isn't usually recommended because it can decrease your milk supply. There are certain medical conditions that may require giving some formula, but if breastfeeding is going well, a better option is to supplement with a mother's own milk. If for any reason a mom needs to be separated from their baby, the nurses will teach how to hand express milk or use a pump. I'm so glad I was able to connect with you. This information is so helpful. Last stop, my WIC peer counselor, Jeannie. Good morning, Sarina. Morning, Jeannie. First off, can you tell everyone what WIC is? WIC stands for Women, Infants, and Children. It's a free nutrition and breastfeeding program that provides healthy food, nutrition education, and breastfeeding support. WIC offers breastfeeding classes and counseling by lactation consultants and trained peer counselors who have had breastfeeding experience, like me. That's so great. When I left the hospital, I didn't feel alone, knowing WIC could help me and my family. For sure. WIC staff can help with questions about positioning and latching the baby, and support families in general through the normal bumps in the road that can happen with breastfeeding. People interested in WIC can visit the website to learn if they are eligible and apply online, or they can call the 800 number. You were such a big help to me, and the breastfeeding group I attended was awesome. But what if families are not on WIC? How can they get help? There are lactation consultants at the hospital and families can also log on to zipmilk.org. It's a great website where you type in your zip code to find lactation support near you, like lactation consultants, baby cafes, La Leche League, and support groups. Thank you, Jeannie. You have been so helpful. Anytime. So there you have it, Breastfeeding 101. It's a lot of information, so you may want to watch this video more than once. As for me, I better get on with my day. See ya! Bye.